Solving general chemistry problems. Thermodynamics. The simplest heat capacity problem heats a substance directly with a given heat transfer rate. In this case, we have a pan containing a kilogram of water at room temperature, and it is placed on an electric stove. The element is heated such that it is providing one kilowatt of heat to the pan of water. You leave it on the stove for two minutes, and then you remove it. What is the water temperature at that time? Calorimetry experiments measure and relate the flow of heat to changes in the temperature of the system. The main equation used here is that Q, the heat transferred, is equal to the product of the temperature change, delta T, and a constant unique to the system being considered called the heat capacity, C. Now be careful to not confuse the symbol C with the unit for temperature Celsius. Celsius will always have the degree symbol in front of it. Heat capacity is what is known as an extensive property of a system. That means that its value depends upon how much of the substance is present. The heat capacity is larger if we are discussing a larger amount of material. This is in contrast to an intensive property such as temperature. If you double the size of a system which is at 20 degrees Celsius, it is still at 20 degrees Celsius. Its temperature has not changed just because you increased its size. One of the first things in solving general chemistry problems is recognizing what things you can ignore. For instance, without being told otherwise, we should ignore the heating element's energy that may not be going into the water, radiating it into the air or into the stove, for instance. Also, we are ignoring the saucepan itself. It too will take up energy to be heated, but we will pretend it is negligible compared to the water. We know to do this because the question would have to provide additional information otherwise. So what is the heat capacity of this water? If you look up water on Wikipedia, you will find two numbers for its heat capacity. 4.1813 joules per kelvin gram and 75.327 joules per kelvin mole. The units themselves tell us that we should use the 4.1813 value as it is measured in mass, like the water as given in the problem. If we let the units guide us, we can see how to convert this mass-specific heat capacity to account for the one kilogram of mass we are given. Multiply the specific heat capacity by the mass of one kilogram and convert that kilogram to grams. The heat capacity for this specific amount of water is 4,181.3 joules per Kelvin, meaning that it takes 4,181.3 joules of added heat to raise the temperature of this amount of water by one Kelvin. The question asks us to find a temperature change, so after looking at the equation again, we must have to find a value for Q, the heat transferred. What is a kilowatt? A watt is a joule per second, so a kilowatt is a kilojoule per second. So 1,000 joules of energy is entering the water in the form of heat every second. That is what one kilowatt means. Again, let the units guide what we need to do and if you are careful to write them out, you will see that since a watt is in units of per second, we need to convert the time in minutes into seconds. Expand the calculation and find that Q, the heat transferred in two minutes, at this rate of one kilowatt, must be 120,000 joules. So how hot does the water get after two minutes? We need to rearrange the calorimetry equation to solve for delta T, which is found by dividing Q by the heat capacity C. Again, note that the units, what the units are doing. 120,000 joules divided by 4,181.3 joules per Kelvin gives 28.7 Kelvin for the change in temperature. Note that this is the change in temperature, so that the final temperature is 20.0 plus 28.7 equals 48.7 degrees Celsius. This is the answer to the problem. Now, if you will allow me to take just a couple of more minutes, I'd like to revisit a few things that you might have noticed along the way of solving this problem. First, I used a lot of unit algebra. And uh, unit algebra is treating units like they were numbers. We can divide and multiply them. By using unit algebra, it helps you in setting up the equations to be used and helps to confirm that you have found the right result. In this case of finding the heat capacity, we can cancel out kilograms, numerator and denominator, and cancel out grams similarly. 
Now be careful not to confuse kilograms, lowercase k, lowercase g, with Kelvin grams, capital K space, lowercase g. Then at the end, after grouping together the units that are left over, you have joules per Kelvin, which you should know now are the units of heat capacity. Because the units work out, you can be more confident that you have the right answer. What is the connection between degrees Celsius and Kelvin? You might notice that I casually added the temperature change in Kelvin to the initial temperature in degrees Celsius to get the final temperature in degrees Celsius. Can I do that? The size of a degree Celsius is identical to the size of a Kelvin unit. Because they are the same size and because we are talking about the difference in temperature, then I can switch them around easily as needed. The Kelvin scale and the Celsius scale are only different by where they place the value zero. The incremental steps are the same size. Now this is not true when comparing to the Fahrenheit scale. And this is only true when speaking about changes or differences in temperature. In most equations in chemistry, we should be using Kelvin. But in calorimetry, where we use temperature differences, the two scales get mixed together occasionally. Note also that an accomplished scientist will talk about, for instance, 298 Kelvin, but will never say degrees Kelvin. The temperature unit is the Kelvin. There is no degree with it. But we do need the degree for the Celsius scale. We used the term of a watt and pointed out that it is equivalent to one joule per second. While a joule is a unit of energy, a watt measures the rate of energy flow, which is the property of power. Joules tells us how much energy there is, while watts tells us how fast the energy is being transferred. And it might be interesting to see where the term calorimetry comes from. In the early days of thermodynamics, the first theories described heat as a fluid that would flow from a hot body to a cold body. And this was not a fluid like we perceive a liquid to be. They called this elusive fluid caloric, and it was measured by calories. So calorimetry is a combination of the words calorie and metric, and is therefore the science of measuring heat. Now I'd like to point out one more thing. You will come across heat capacity in many different forms. Every object has some heat capacity. If it is a complex object, made up of different materials and separate pieces, like a car for instance, there will be some amount of heat that it absorbs in order to increase its temperature. Such a thing will just have units of joules per Kelvin. Engineers commonly deal with complex materials that are nevertheless reasonably uniform in their properties. Think here of concrete or asphalt or wood. Rather than provide a heat capacity for an entire road, like asphalt for instance, it is better to give a heat capacity that is specific in terms of mass or volume. This is called specific heat capacity with units of joules per kelvin gram or joules per kelvin milliliter. Scientists often deal with pure substances, and while a mass specific heat capacity can still be useful, Sometimes a molar heat capacity is also available. A molar heat capacity only makes sense for pure substances. Like what is a mole of concrete after all? In particular, gases have a different heat capacity depending upon whether they are being held under constant volume or constant pressure conditions. So depending upon the material and the context of the problem, you may see any or all of these expressions, but they will all give the same answer when treated correctly. Here are some different expressions for the heat capacity of water. The units can be used to inform you of the specific type of heat capacity being described.